Cyclone Sundays with Ben Bruns, powered by Kelderman Manufacturing. From the Channel Seat Studios, this is IOI Everywhere. Welcome, Cyclone Sunday, presented by Kelderman Manufacturing from the Channel Seat Studios. I'm Aiden Wyatt, joined as always by Ben Bruns. Let's get right into things. Uh, I want to start on the offensive side, as we talked about a little bit before the show. I think Nate Shieldhouse has the keys to the offense. I mean, weeks one, two, and three, I think, are a noticeable difference between weeks four and five at this point. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. And, and I think, you know, uh, the, the question uh, – that everybody had is why is Iowa State continuing to run the football when we weren't having a lot of success with that? And, you know, I think you're starting to see the the outcome of that. You know, we're able to do a lot more in the play action game. I liked the backside pressure that Iowa State was bringing. Uh, oh, you did a good job defending it a couple of times in this game, um, particularly early. But, um, you know, Iowa State was running some of that um, – you know, read option look where you're where you're coming backside uh, with the quarterback and in uh, uh, jet motion or something like that where there's a pitch guy, and I think you're going to continue to see Iowa State develop that concept. But you know, it's becoming a pass first uh, sort of uh, running and play action uh, kind of approach, and uh, I think it's really good. I, I do think. Um, you know, probably if coach had had uh, that third down call um, toward the end of the first half back um, where we did a little half roll and we threw the pick, um, might might want something else in that situation. But, um, you know, this game was uh, super competitive for the first half and and uh, until, you know, really that play broke the uh, broke the thing open for OU. But um yeah, I like what Iowa State is doing in terms of evolving this uh, offense to to be able to um, you know, move the football consistently. Uh, I really like how Iowa State ran the football in the first uh, you know uh, first half. And once you get in as big a hole as we were in, then you know it gets a little bit harder to run uh, your standard offense like Iowa State was trying to play out of in the second half, but. Um, that offensive line really made a lot of steps uh, in this game too. Uh, we'll get to the offensive line in a sec. Uh, who stood out to you on the offensive side for Iowa State? Well, I think, uh, you know, Rocco uh, just continues to make great throws. It takes guts to throw a ball up the seam that hard, you know, on the money to wide receivers where, you know, there's a safety right there. They're playing cover two. They're sitting back. That safety's coming downhill, and you know Iowa State really punished OU's safeties in the, in the large parts of this game um, for playing a little bit too wide, trying to take away things along the sideline. And uh, uh, you know Rocco made all the throws, so I was impressed with that. I felt like most of the offensive line uh, had a better day. Um, Sama obviously with a couple big runs, and um, Higgins with some great plays too. So. You know, I think uh, offensively, um, that group is really improving. Uh, I thought the tight ends blocked a lot better too. You know, and and I've maligned the Iowa State tight ends to this point. Um, I, I saw some great plays. Uh, you know, even out of the young guys uh, getting blocks sealed up, and it, it makes a huge difference in the running game, right? Uh, when you have um, somebody not able to to you know. It's, it's one thing to not have movement in a hole. It's another thing to get chased down from the backside of plays. And, you know, when a tight end doesn't make a block uh, on the edges, you're going to get uh, somebody coming in and, and, you know, hitting the uh, back uh, before he can hit a crease and, and get out. And um, that's something that Iowa State took a huge step forward in in this game. All right, let's dive into the offensive line. So a couple things there, I, you know, number one, I, I got to tip tip the hat to uh, OU's nose guards. They really were a lot to handle uh, and, and, you know, we struggled some against them. But um, I think some of the adjustments that the staff made uh, in terms of we're, we're still running the same stuff, but now we're fold blocking uh, instead of zone blocking everything. And what I mean is, uh, in a zone block concept, 
you know, you're, you're butt to butt trying to work up the field and then uh, you scrape off to the linebacker. When you fold block, uh, you're, you're still got, you've still got the same assignments, but uh, the, the guy who's uncovered comes across and uh, has, has an angle block now, uh, just a drive block. Uh, and, and the other player just steps back, the other offensive lineman or tight end steps back and folds around it and comes up to the linebacker. We did a much better job of defining running lanes. And, and that's one of the risks with it, right? You, you uh, are going to define where the hole is for the back because you're, you're giving away leverage that you would get with the zone uh, scheme where you can go both ways. But uh, because Iowa State hadn't been effective at moving the down guy, and then scraping off to the linebacker, um, who cares, right? So you're, you're not getting the benefit of that zone scheme in a lot of cases. I think it's a brilliant job of uh, coaching adjustment to say, look, we're going to fold this and, and uh, just see how it works. And it worked really, really well. Um, they, they didn't do it all the time, but they did it enough that uh, OU wasn't used to seeing that from us. And uh, um, we got distortion when we did that. And you know, when you run the football, you're looking to try and distort the defense in a specific uh, location or locations. And um, Iowa State got creases. They stayed on guys. I think it helped Iowa State fit into those blocks a lot better. You know, we talked last week about blocking angle, that the guys really were in a much better position mm -hmm. um, of, of having that aggressive uh, body angle. But their steps were a little bit big. This allowed them to take the same kind of action that they've been taking um, and have a more sure target. And um, I, I was just really impressed. I think um, great adjustment, much better job of guys staying on blocks uh, consistently and longer. And that allows some of the creases that we saw. Uh, let's flip to the defensive side. We've seen two straight games now of a John Haycock defense not looking like a John Haycock defense, to say the least. Uh, Iowa State gave up 400 yards last week on 27 points this week, 50 points. I don't have the exact yardage in front of me, but it wasn't pretty. So is that something of concern moving forward to you? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, you know, I think um, uh, Malik Verdon uh, is, is a guy that, you know, Iowa State really misses. Um, and it looked like he played a little bit in the game. So possible that uh, we can get him back. That safety play really has has been, you know, the part for me that's been a surprise this season. I just felt like um, we, we've we not necessarily been as solid in the alleys uh, as we have been in the past. Um, and, and that is super important because when you run this 3-3-5, you, um, you know, there's – there's not a there's nobody has leverage out there other than uh, the the safeties and the outside linebackers and um, you know I think I think they'll get it figured out but um, you know I also think that it's important that we all have to adjust our mindset to say okay uh, this defense is not where it has been in the past and um, and I think from a coaching perspective if you're Matt Campbell you have to say. Look, what are you gonna? What are we gonna do to fix this? What can what can be done? But also, um, I have to coach a little bit differently. I have to game manage a little bit differently. If if we're not going to be in a position where we can regularly get off the field, and you know, fourth down was the killer in this game for Iowa State, the absolute killer. Iowa State gave up a bunch of fourth down conversions, including touchdowns, and you know, um, that's about guys being in the right spot, making plays. Um, yeah, I didn't feel like the game was all that well officiated. And, and um, you know, I think that was to Iowa State's detriment. Uh, there was an, uh, an OPI that wasn't called there. And there was a hold on that same play. There were a couple late hits on Rocco that didn't get called. And, you know, those are all moments that matter in a game where you're a little bit outgunned. And, and you know, I think the bottom line is OU was better than, than Iowa State. And, um, you know, I thought uh, Gabriel played a great game. He just was was outstanding, but we're also not used to uncontested throws down the field, and you know I think that's the piece that, as as a Cyclone faithful, um, that's probably the most concerning. You know the lack of pass rush. Well, you lost a first round pass rusher. Uh, that that's um, you know uh, also an issue. Uh, a lot of guys played on defense a lot, and uh, you know I think. 
the staff recognized that we're hey we're young we need to get guys experience uh we got some guys hurt let's let's go play a bunch of people and and see what we can do and some of those uh, young guys made some good plays so um you know i thought uh bacon was uh, uh greasy in that game so um i i, I was uh, impressed with the play of some younger guys uh, specifically on the defensive line obviously iowa state has had the best pass rusher in school history you know back to back guys that stretches to what seven or eight seasons in a row right do you think Iowa State will have to adjust their defense from rushing just three guys every play in terms of pass coverage? Well, I think I think we have. You know, I think we've seen uh, more pressure from Iowa State's uh, uh, bringing four, uh, in some cases bringing five. The problem is we brought four or five Nimian home, and uh, you know it didn't get close. And so, um, you know, I think the the effectiveness of that um, package is. Uh, is is still in question. We, you know, there was one uh, sack where we blitzed a linebacker and caught him, but you know that was really it. Um, so I, I, that's a major issue for this defense. Um, I still think there's talent there. I still think the guys can evolve into it, um, and and you know will over time. Um, they also played against a good. Uh, pass blocking offensive line, uh, you know, OU has come a long way in a year. And I think we need to recognize that as a, um, you know, a circumstance that, um, that is real. I think we played one of the better teams, the big 12, uh, and there's a lot of opportunity still out there. So in general, I think this game was a measuring sick game for Iowa state. Yeah, at this point in the season, it's Texas, it's Oklahoma, and it's everyone else. It seems like. How do you think Iowa State measured up to Oklahoma overall? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it wasn't competitive in the second half, and so I think, um, you know, I think there's a, a hats off to OU. Um, I think Texas is a lot better than everybody else. Um, you know, with what they did to Kansas, I think this OU team is going to have their hands full with Kansas. Um, you know, I think some of the new teams, I think UCF is, is uh, a good football team. Um, I'm not sure how good TCU and Baylor are. Uh, you know, I think, um, I think they're, they're different than they have been in the last couple of years, which gives Iowa state a real opportunity. Um, and, you know, I think, um, it's just a little bit hard to tell where this Iowa state team is right now. Cause we're so young. And, um, you know, I liked the offensive evolution big time. I mean, you know, in the first quarter, I was like, uh, look, if nothing else happens in this game, we made a huge step forward in the O-line play. And, and that's kind of where you're at right now. You, you, um, you're trying to scrap it out and get to a bowl game, uh, and you need to, um, go, you know, get some wins in conference. And, and, uh, you know, I think, I think there's a chance to do that, but, um, you know, I, I think um, I think Iowa State uh, is going to really struggle with a Texas this year, right? There's just so much speed and so much firepower uh, for Texas. When Texas plays Alabama and they have the better defensive line, that's something new. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I just um, – not to say that we're not in that game. We've, we've played really well against them in recent history and, um, you know, we'll see, but you got to beat the Kansas and the Kansas States of the world uh, in order to accomplish what Iowa state wants this year. And I think uh, there's a need to continue to grow in a pretty major way. And, and the good news is I think everybody in that locker room is committed to it. And, and I think um, there's a lot of folks who can continue to take huge steps forward and, and just, you know, just the tight end play, Aiden, from, uh, you know, where we were early in the season to where we are now, night and day, night and day difference in improvement. And so, you know, um, that's what can happen with a young team, right? And that's what you want to have happen with a young mm -hmm. team. So I'm, I'm, I feel okay with where Iowa State is. I, I don't like getting beat by 30 and letting them put 50 points up, but, um, you know, uh, to come right back after the pick six and go score uh, early in the game, big time uh, to break some runs and break some throws and uh, really punish OU, this OU defense that had been so good all season um, is a, uh, is a big step forward.
So what do you think? I was just going to bring up, let's talk about next week. I mean, yeah. it should be a great opportunity for Iowa State. It's going to be a special night at Jack Trice with all of the Jack Trice uh, legacy jerseys, uh, ceremonies, everything on top of a night game. I mean, yeah. this is like storybook kind of stuff. It is. And, I think and, Iowa State needs to take advantage next week, you know. I totally agree. And, and um, you know, let's just pause on Jack Trice for a second because I think – um, I was really moved. I went to the Memorial Union um, in the spring uh, and uh, saw the the feature that they have on Jack Trice there. Um, man, you know, what a truly heartbreaking um, kind of thing because, and it's not just, you know, the, the, the story of him and the game and, uh, you know, the sacrifice are, are just... Um, <laughs> really significant in um, in his heroism, but the the pain that you could see that his mom and his and his family had, you know, in losing him in the letters that they wrote uh, is just it's just it's so uh, it's so moving and it, you know I just uh, I just read the letter from his mom and, and wept, you know, um, because, you know, it just it just put it all in perspective. Right. Um, we see him as a hero. She she sees him as, you know, he's not here anymore and and she doesn't understand why. And, you know, um, so. Uh, this will be a super emotional game for Iowa State's players. Um, and and fans and you know i think that um we need that we need we need a, a moment where you know it's not just about the pressure of being a young guy trying to learn how to play it's it's about playing for something bigger than yourself which is exactly what jack was doing and um you know to to possibly come close to paying tribute to him is something that would be you know unlikely for us to be able to do right um given the nature of his sacrifice but um you know he he gave it everything he had and um you know that that um that is what you ask of uh, anybody who puts on um uh, the the uniform man you know uh, it's a great opportunity to to wear uh, to wear this, and um, you know uh, it's not an easy thing, and uh, it, it's easier elsewhere. Um, but um, you know these young guys who are out here doing it, and I think about like TJ Tampa. TJ Tampa probably could have been playing at OU, right? I mean, um, mm -hmm. OU's team was built in large part by guys that they had taken from other teams in the in the league, and um, you know I think. Um, I, I'm I'm proud to have a number of those guys really stay and and play and um, you know learn and grow and but do it here right um, because they they want to continue being cyclones and um, you know they're not getting paid what other guys what they could have made in other places so um, I think uh, that's going to continue to be a trend um, you know there's going to be teams with deeper pockets than us, but, uh, if Brett Bloom keeps bringing out the, uh, purchase more, uh, bangers, you know, we're going to be good. So, um, <laughs> I, I, I think Saturday night is a great opportunity. Yeah. I think just talking about the Jack Trice stuff, I think it's the coolest thing ever that it's more than football at this point. I think for a while it was, Oh, we had the stadium named after him. We got that statue out front too, but now, you know, we have, the Stark Performance Center has the giant Jack Trice logo on it. They're selling sweatshirts and everything with the logo on it. I think the gymnastics team even has uh, uniforms. That's probably the wrong word. With the Jack Trice logo on it. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's just the coolest thing ever. And it's a just really cool to have that kind of awareness across all of Iowa State instead of just Iowa State football. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I, you know... Um, history and tradition and uh the the you know the fact that um this is so unique in college sports uh is i mean you know we have the only stadium named after a black player and um 
you know, you think about all the incredible um, black players that have that have played the game. Um, you know, that have that have given to their universities. Um, that's a super unique thing, and um, you know, I, I think it uh, it's mind boggling about how how this uh, you know what he had to give in order to to you know, get in that place. But um, you know, it, it's. Um, it's something that's uniquely Iowa state and uh, you know, we will not forget um, Jack Trice and, and his uh, sacrifice and, you know, to his family and, and to uh, um, you know, it, it's something that's part of our whole uh, university and, and my hats off to uh, Matt and the staff for really understanding that story and really embracing that story. And, you know, it takes, um, it takes a coaching staff who's been in a place for a while to, to get, you know, to the depth of understanding and the, in the richness of, uh, you know, Hey, let's put this, let's put this out there in a way that, you know, we can, mm -hmm. people can really identify with at a higher level. Um, and, you know, I give a lot of credit to the football staff for, uh, for that and embracing it. And obviously there's other folks at the university of marketing and, um, those kinds of things. But, um, this starts with this football staff, um, you know, genuinely embracing um, that story and, you know, um, carrying it with them every day. All right, Bruns, we are out of time. Any last thoughts before we get out of here? Yeah, let's just get after it, man. You know, I think uh, I, I think you got to just take this one and say, all right, we're 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 good. That film's in the can and we're going to move on to the next thing. And we're going to, uh, that was this thing that people used to do in many years ago. Um, uh, yeah, real film. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know, I heard about it. Um, let's, go, let's, let's go, you know, uh, let's take the things that we did well and build on them. And let's take the things that make us mad that we saw that we did poorly and, and, uh, you know, figure out how to learn and grow and, and, uh, you know, shift gears. So, I think this defense has to take a huge step forward uh, on Saturday and, and uh, um, you know, the offense is continuing to evolve. So it's good. All right. Great stuff as always. Ben, thank you for your time. This has been Thanks. Cyclone Sunday. We're now going to send it to a man, Matt Nelson, for our Channel Seedsman analysis of the week. All right. We now welcome in to the Channel Seed Studios, my man, Matt Nelson. This is Cyclone Sunday presented by Color Manufacturing. Matt, what do you think of the game tonight? Oh man, uh, a lot of positives through the first, most of the first half, and then it really just kind of got away from him in a hurry there. The the Rocco interception for the second time, just an you know, ill-fated decision, right, to not throw it away, to try to force the ball. Um, you you add a block punt in there, and all of a sudden that game gets away. Um, in general, though, probably still more encouraged by the offense than anything. Obviously, in the second half, didn't move the ball, um, but that game was so off schedule by that point. Had they been able to keep with that same rhythm you you saw through the first quarter and a half, it probably would have been a little bit different outcome. But um, the big thing is you've got to be concerned with the defense at this point, right? I don't know how you can't be Oklahoma State, really poor offensive team, move the ball really easily on us last week. And obviously Oklahoma is incredible, great offense, uh, really good quarterback, good skill positions, good coaching. But that was too easy for them through three quarters tonight. Any specific players that stood out to you? Um, man, uh, Ben Brommer on a catch that was called incomplete. <laughs> that was one of the coolest catches that we'll ever see. That doesn't count. Unbelievable. Uh, okay. Honestly, the, so yes, I, I know we gave up some pressures towards the end of that game, but man, for a while there, the offensive line, both in the run game in and pass protection did, did do a nice job. Eli Sanders, I thought looked really good. You were actually able to run the ball for two quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the second half, you saw a couple larger runs. So, that's certainly encouraging. I know Oklahoma's probably not elite from a defensive line standpoint or a linebacker standpoint, but that probably does bode well for the rest of the season. Um, Jalen Noel, I, think, I thought, had another nice game. Jaden Higgins, you saw a big play from. Um, I mean, to be honest, most of it's probably offensive. Um, defensively, TJ Tampa was outstanding. Um, past him, though, I, I've really never seen so many missed tackles from this defense. Um, so many bad plays on the ball. Um I guess, you know, Jeremiah Cooper had another really good game. But, man, that, that back end of the defense was really put under pressure tonight and did not respond very well. Let's look ahead to next week. Iowa State hosts TCU on the uh, Jack Trice 100th anniversary game. Yep. Should be a special night with uh, the alternate uniforms, night game kickoff. How do you feel about Iowa State moving forward? 
you feel good, right? Aiden, they showed that schedule graphic mm-hmm. there towards the end of the game. And, you know, the announcer, they always want to pump you up saying they could win every game from here on out. But really, as you look at that schedule with those next five, getting Kansas at home, um, you can win some games there. Um, Cincinnati's look vulnerable. I know Baylor came back today. Uh, I think they look vulnerable. I, I don't really know that it changes your outlook all that much. I mean, you saw some really big plays from the offense. You saw them run the ball. Obviously, in the second half, it didn't go well. But at that point, what, you were down 20 going to the locker room. Right right away so it clearly changes the script of that game and at that point to me it looked like the coaches were kind of like okay well we kind of got to burn this second half there's not nothing productive is going to happen here mm-hmm. um but i mean I, I was watching the game with some neighbors right i said and friends i said can we can we just cover like that that was what i wanted going into it and at the end of the day they didn't get that far from it um oklahoma is just really good i did not think they would look this good aiden this year uh last year did not go well for them that's a lot to fix in a year um, they've clearly done it. They're, they're a good team. So um, I think that, I think they can win next weekend. I think uh, TCU's defense has struggled at times. Their offense has struggled at times. Uh, should be a really fun home atmosphere. And um, if the defense can correct some things, and some of that is really just blocking and tackling, right? It's executing, right. wrapping up, mm-hmm. um, turning your head, you know, making a play in the ball. There are a couple passes tonight that were, I think, were interceptable. So um, we've seen the secondary play well this season. It's not like they're just all bums and everything is broken. They, they, mm-hmm. they just got, so I still think the outlook is there's got, there's a path to claw your way to five or six wins. That, that is not far gone. Um, so, you know, you've played two conference games. You've got some time yet to see if you can't pick up three or four more wins. Absolutely. Any last thoughts before we get out of here? <sighs> Oklahoma's good. Like I, I didn't know how they look. Aiden, I know that was kind of the talk, right? Well, they haven't really played anybody. Right. Turns out they're they're good. They've made strides on defense. I thought they tackled really well. They blitzed a lot, and they got home. Uh, their defensive line looked good. I mean, that's that's a good football team. They, they'll they'll mm-hmm. win a lot of games. They'll probably win you know ten plus. So um, hard to have expectations of anything when you go play in Norman against a team that looks like that. But uh, just a little bit disappointed how the defense played overall. Though I think you know you just move on to the next game. All right, Matt. Thanks for being here. Thank you for your time. Always great catching up with you. This has been Cyclone Sunday presented by Keller Manufacturing from the Channel Seed Studios. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Ed.